What's up out there? Welcome to week three of the Halloween Horror Movie Marathon of 2022. Now, I know it's still October, and we're counting down the days till we get to October, but I, like I said in previous videos, I start early. I want to get a head start on this. I've watched another few movies. So I don't want to go over them, but I wanted to go, I wanted to get this done today because tomorrow I'm probably going to go see a movie, and then maybe Saturday or Sunday I might go see something. But there's a lot of cool stuff coming out. Uh, Barbarian is out now. I want to see that. Um, Smile is coming out or is out now. I can't remember. Um, I want to go see that this weekend. Uh, the new Hellraiser movie hits uh, on Hulu, I think, in a couple of days. Shudder advertised some, something new that they're going to surprise everybody with, which I'm hoping is something cool. Um, let's see. What else is there? Um, Halloween, kill, or Halloween Ends. Not Halloween Kills. Halloween Ends. So there's four movies right there, four or five. There's quite a few movies that are there that I've been wanting to see. And I have another five that I've watched. And because I'm going to be out tomorrow, which is Friday, and then probably the rest of the weekend, I figured I'd get this video done. I've already got five movies watched, so we'll go over this. And then we'll see how things go into October. Um, kind of chipping away at this list. I've added a few more, but I've knocked a few of the list off. So... Starting off was a movie from 1971 called The Brotherhood of Satan. This is directed by Bernard McVitty McEvity, something like that. Uh, did not recognize anybody out of this movie. The category was Bloodthirsty Old People, and I watched this on a voodoo rental. It's made in the U.S. Uh, like I said, this is for bloodthirsty old people. Um, I gave this one three out of five stars. This one was a little different different um it starts off with a tank i'm not sure exactly what kind of tank whether it was like a sherman or whatever but it was some old tank from the 70s or whatever driving over a car and it kind of goes on i i would describe this as mayberry taken over by children of the corn um the old people were doing something with the kids and the kids were killing people and it was kind of a bizarre movie very strange uh, there was a high body count. Apparently they were talking about all these people that were dead that you didn't really get to see. I'd kind of like to see this remade as something modern. Um, keep some of the craziness. Like they didn't explain the tank. I have no idea what a tank had to do with this. Like they just rented one and I, I don't know. It was kind of a bizarre thing to put in here, but, um, I'd watch this again. I don't know that I would recommend it. It was interesting, I guess, uh, a little slow, a little, not so great, but, I'd like to see this remade, if for nothing else, just to take that craziness and modernize it and show all the bodies and stuff, you know, showing people getting murdered and everything. Because I like Children of the Corn, and I don't know, I think this was kind of a weird movie. Anyway, that was Brotherhood of Satan from 1971. Next up was a movie called Forbidden World. This is from 1982, directed by Alan Holtzman, and um, Roger Corman produced this. So I did not recognize any of the cast in here. Uh, this is just an extra movie that I threw on here. It was on Screenbox, and I've been checking that out. Um, this is film, filmed in the U.S. I gave this thing two and a half out of five stars. Um, I don't know, man. This movie kind of sucked a lot. Uh, it was very boring. I really liked the, the creature design out of it. I thought the creature design was really cool. But this was more of a weird combination of like alien and the thing or something like it just wasn't i don't know i i didn't really dig this one at all it, it was very hard to get this is going to be a theme that goes on for this whole week uh this one was a struggle to get through the movie kind of sucked I, I regretted adding it in here but it was short and i so i just watched it in like two or three sessions i was like eh, whatever i i kept getting bored with it and leaving and coming back and i finally finished it off uh do, do not recommend this one kind of sucked uh, so that was Forbidden World from 1982. The next film that I watched was kind of interesting, actually. This one is called Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. This is from 1972. And oddly enough, this was directed by Bob Clark, who you'd know from Black Christmas, which was, an, uh, I think, 74, 75, somewhere in there. It's a mid-70s movie. He's also the one that directed A Christmas Story, which I remember going to see that in the theater when I was a little kid. Uh, he also made Porky's. So he's had this really weird uh, filmography that he's created, and 
I don't know. I didn't recognize any of the cast. This was a regional entry on the list. The category for it was the regional stuff. I watched this on Tubi. It is a U.S. movie. And I gave this one three out of five stars. I, I don't know that I want to say I enjoyed this. This is like an hour and a half long, and it felt very much longer than that. Uh, it was very slow and dry. I would not say that it's boring, but it's dry, and it's very slow. Uh, the one main... It's like an actor group goes out to the graveyard and they're going to dig up a body or something. And some things happen. It's very slow. And like I said, it's kind of not a whole lot happens. And eventually zombies show up. And it, it was kind of cool at that point. Um, but I don't know that the juice was worth the squeeze, if you know what I'm saying. It was just not a great movie. I kind of want to see this remade, though. As I've mentioned with some other movies that I've watched, I... I don't necessarily mind a remake if the remake makes it better and does more with it. And this is one that I think could benefit from that. I think it's, for one, I think it's got a really cool name, first and foremost. And second of all, like, th the whole story and the way things play out could be done very much better. Could be, there's a lot of room for improvement there. And the ending wasn't bad. Like, I almost turned it off after a certain part because um, I thought it was over. But... It still kept going, so I was like, well, I'll let it see where it goes. And the actual ending to this, like a full minute later after you think it's over, it goes into a little bit more. And it, it's, I thought it was kind of cool. It's not anything special or fantastic. It's just the extra stuff that they did at the very end I thought was kind of cool. Like I said, nothing special, nothing fantastic, but it was kind of interesting to see that it didn't just stop where you thought it was going to stop. It kept going a little bit. Um, so I gave this one three out of five stars. I kind of enjoyed the dialogue that the people had. Um, the one main guy, the leader of the acting group, man, you just want to see him get eaten right off because he's he's an annoying prick the entire time. Um, the other people were uh, were decent, you know, normal people. But I don't know. I actually kind of enjoyed this in some way. It's not a great movie by any stretch, and giving it three stars is kind of pushing it a little bit, but I did appreciate the ending to it. And I did, even though it was kind of dull and slow, I did enjoy the dialogue and everything and the, the people and the banter and the way that they interacted with each other. I at least thought that was interesting, if not dull and slow. So anyway, that was Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things from 1972. Okay, continuing this slog through Mediocre Week is The Sacrament from 2013. This is directed by Ty West. I didn't recognize any of the cast in here. Um, the category was Ty West. We had to pick and this one in the next movie we're going to look at here. Um, we had to, uh, There was a list of directors. You had to pick five movies from those directors. So I, there were six directors, and I picked one from each. So there's six total. And a little extra went in there because I had some room in my list. But I ended I ended up picking this from Ty West instead of uh, X or Pearl or some of the other movies he's got out now. I wanted to see this. I watched this on Jonestown. Or I watched this on Voodoo. It is made in the U.S. and it is basically about Jonestown. And um, the Jonestown thing was kind of an interesting deal. You know, you go back and you watch. I watched a documentary from Netflix. Like I remember very little details as a kid about Jonestown, but. Um, that's where the whole you drinking the Kool-Aid thing comes from, at least to my knowledge. Uh, a bunch of people went on some religious thing and they got brainwashed or something and they ended up drinking a bunch of Kool-Aid that was laced with something and dying. Um, like martyrs or something. I don't know. It was, you have to watch the whole documentary about it. It was, it was a very interesting story. And I went into this thinking that he was going to write something, um, about that based on that but different than that you know what i mean like here we're going to base this on this idea and then we're going to take it in a different direction unfortunately he just made a movie about jonestown and called it somewhere else like eden parish or something uh the events that happened down there were basically just remade for this movie and i had a lot of problems with this like number one just stealing that entire premise and reusing it uh, just call it Jonestown or something, you know, just call it like it is. Don't call it the sacrament. Don't call everything different. Just call it like it was because you just basically made the entire thing, which 
there's no supernatural twist. There's, you know what I mean? Like there's nothing there to make it um, unique or different. It's just a retelling of that, which I could go watch the documentary and get far more out of it and be far more engaged. This was, it was okay. Uh, one of the problems that I, one of the big problems that I had is it's supposed to be filmed by a documentary crew, which you would expect um, a certain amount of found footage look or like a documentary. You're going to go and this camera guy is looking at the person that's talking and this camera guy is looking at the person that's doing the interview. But some of the camera angles felt weird, like they were just being filmed by a camera crew, not not the three guys that went down there you know, as the, um, documentary crew, it felt like some filmmakers were filming a documentary crew doing some things. You know what I mean? If you get the distinction, it wasn't, it wasn't as found footage or documentary style as it should have been. Things felt weird. They had music throughout the whole thing. Like if it was going to be a, a found footage movie, there shouldn't be big blast coming through when something happens or music playing. I mean, unless it's naturally in the environment, somebody playing music on a radio or something, but like they were doing it like a movie. So it really had this odd, it just didn't feel right. Like it's supposed to be a documentary found footage thing, but it's really a movie about that. And it's not even taking and making the stuff that was down there interesting or different. It's just remaking that and calling it a new product. So it was a very disappointing movie. Um, in my opinion, just go watch a Jonestown documentary and skip this one. This one sucked. The cast was good. The acting was good. Um, yes, it followed the Jonestown thing. The filming was okay. Uh, I, I gave this one three out of five stars. I mean, it's not total garbage, but just go watch a Jonestown documentary. You'll get more out of it. You'll get the actual facts and the events. And if you listen to some of the audio that was recorded at that site, it's way more haunting than this movie will ever be. So that's the sacrament from 2013. Skip this thing and move on. And for the final turd sandwich of this shitty week, uh, The Night of Bloody Horror from 1969. This was directed by Joy N. Houck Jr. And this is another one that we had to pick from a list of directors. He was one of the other directors like Ty West was. Um, so that's the category on this is that the director is the category. I watched this on Tubi. It is made in the U S I will give this one two and a half out of five stars and say, absolutely not recommended. Um, the thing to note on this is, or cast of note on this is Gerald McCraney, which was big in like the eighties and nineties of like sitcoms and stuff. He's been around for a while. I forgot the guy existed and I, I don't really know that I've watched a lot of shows that he's in, but I know who he is and I've seen some of it. So this is the first movie, his debut movie or whatever, from what I could gather. And he totally did not look <laughs> like what I've seen. Obviously it's from 10 or 12 years or 15 years before he started doing the other TV stuff. So he had aged quite a bit. He's very young in this. Um, basically this is kind of a movie like psycho. It was kind of really boring and not dull or slow straight up boring. Like there was some kills and stuff. The sixties, I, I meant to look it up before I started recording this, but in my opinion, the sixties was a pretty bad decade for horror movies. There wasn't very many good ones. Like in the fifties, you had sci-fi horror and stuff. So they weren't great, but they were interesting. The sixties was more hippie. Like in this movie, he, he, his brother died. And so now he's a serial killer or something because the, he accidentally killed the brother or something. So you get these little flashes of something, but it's that weird 60s hippie flash stuff. Uh, you, if you see it, you'd know what I'm talking about. And it just, it kind of ruins everything. And and that's my experience with a lot of movies from the 60s. Not all. There were some really good ones. Um, I think Psycho came out in the 60s. And there was a few other ones that came out in that decade that, you know, there's some really good movies out there. But as a whole... The 70s and 80s are way better for horror. The 50s is way better. It's the 60s was kind of an odd year or odd, not year, but odd decade. And it didn't really have a lot of good stuff in it. And this is one of the examples. It was kind of bad. There was a little bit of a twist at the end and it was kind of neat to see that. But it wasn't worth the whole movie. Uh, 
it really wasn't worth the whole movie at all. You could chop huge chunks of this movie out, probably make it 10 minutes long, 15 tops, get the whole point across and move on, you know, cause there's just so much dead space of the guy walking around, getting mad and yelling and having these weird episodes. And then he'd be talking to people and dating somebody. And next thing you know, they're dead. I mean, a lot of that could have just gone away and you could skip to the key scenes and move on. There was so much wasted on this. So, Absolutely not recommended. I wouldn't waste my time on this again. And hopefully the next set of movies is much better. Like I said, I'm going to try to go watch some new movies and blend in some of the other stuff and kind of wash this all away. So anyway, it was an unfortunately kind of crappy week, but that is it for this one. We will catch you on the next one. Take care.